Everything have to have volatile beds and corrupting you blood at the same time. What? Like everything, though. You will fall to ruin. All those fucking volatile bed nonsense. Surrounds you. Oh, my God. How unlucky is too unlucky? Jesus. Vengeance is cold indeed. Series of oh, victories yeah. continues. <sighs> it's certainly not easy to do. But that would only slow me down. Storm call seems to be working out pretty well. Soul Catcher Flask Charge, so I'm gonna wait for a second. <sighs> Gotta catch my breath. That was, uh... Holy shit, man. That ultimatum was a little much. Okay, so... We're gonna go say hi to Calm. My mana Hopefully is gone. Hopefully I don't do anything too stupid. Just gonna go on. Click. 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 Uh, didn't quite work out the way I hoped, but it's not too terrible. Yeah. So boss skills can finally boss. That would only slow me down. That was actually a bad example, even though I played it pretty well. Ball storm call. Let's talk a little bit. So, in days of old, ball skills were um, made possible through bloodstained fossils. Uh, bloodstained fossils, when applied to weapons, they add to them this final line of text here on my Glyph Song Eclipse Staff. Vol skills require 40% reduced souls per use. So this is really important for uh, sustenance and upkeep of our Vol skills. And I'll go into greater detail about that in just a moment, but let's talk about Vol soul costs and what a Vol soul is versus a, um, a regular spell that utilizes mana, right? So um, you probably already know this, but Spells like Arc or Stormcall or Ice Nova or uh, Lightning Strike or a multitude of other skill gems in the game have Vol alternates. And essentially what a Vol alternate gem does is it gives you two separate spells to cast. You can think of it like an ultimate in League of Legends or more like a limit break in Final Fantasy VII because it's acquired through dealing more damage, right? The, the, 
more asses you're kicking, the more ass you can kick with the Vol spells, right? So uh, it's like a, an intense damage steroid. And what we're trying to achieve with the Pathfinder in combination with weapons like this, as well as a Soul Catcher and a Soul Ripper flask is 100% uptime or as close to it as we can possibly achieve uh, with the, the ball casting, right? So we're not, we are hand casting, but we're not trying to hand cast the basic spells. We're trying to hand cast our ball spells. So um, let me drink my Soul Ripper class to maximize my spells. So just to show you what actually happens with the um, the weapons, these bloodstained weapons, just look down here. These are my Vol charges. I have Vol Arc here and I have Vol Storm Call. And this is just another one because sometimes my fingers go crazy and I don't want to mess up. So I have I have two on the bar. But um, so 40% reduced cost, right? So as you can see, we still have actually quite a lot of our souls left. And this is because of the uh, one, Soul Ripper actually probably gave us quite a few more souls than what we actually needed to cast because we still had some charges left over. Um, but nevertheless, as you can see, we still have some char some soul charges. Uh, so that's really cool, right? And that's just specifically through the nature of the Vol Schools require 40% reduced uh, soul cost per use. And um, there's a really cool and interesting interaction with uh, this and the Soul Gain Prevention Duration modifier that's available on the Soul Catcher flask. As you can see here, uh, the bottom line of text reads, Vol Souls used during effect have 40% reduced Soul Gain Prevention Duration. So when I press this flask, it actually reduces the Soul Gain Prevention period in the top right hand corner of the Vol Storm Call spell from 3.15 seconds down to zero for some reason which is obviously quite a lot more than 40%, so we're not gonna talk about how that may or may not be a bug. It might be something that's being worked on and therefore is intended. So without going into that conversation, because that's a whole different thing, let's just talk about the mechanics of the build. So in any given moment with this particular character, and I've already kind of displayed this without saying it, what we're trying to achieve is we are hand casting a couple spells, depleting our mana, and then once our mana is depleted a little tiny bit, doesn't have to already be at zero, it just needs to be less than 100%, we can press our Soul Catcher and our Laviangas. This will allow us to continue casting forever, but what it also does is it, like I showed already, it drops our Soul Gain Prevention period from 3.15 seconds to zero seconds on Storm Call. So let me just do that again. And so our optimal DPS rotation is going to be something like casting a couple times, pressing our flask, casting our storm call, pressing the soul ripper, and then pressing another storm call. So as you can see, it dropped two of the little areas of effect on the ground right there. And what's going to happen is the storm call is going to remain at zero seconds, provided that the uh, flask duration is still active on your soul catcher. So all of your storm call casting is going to immediately be refilling up the souls that are required to do subsequent, subsequent casts. But also, you're going to be absorbing souls from all the enemies that you're killing. So as you already saw in those ultimatum encounters that I did, uh, you basically have unlimited souls just flying in and fueling up all of your vol, vol skills. And so it gets a little bit clicky and clacky, and it's very finger intensive as far as your uh, your left hand is concerned. But that being said, in an ultimatum, you can essentially jump between um, just slamming both the Soul Catcher and Soul Ripper at the same time to slamming both your Vol Arc and Vol Storm Call at the same time and alternating between the two in any given ultimatum, and you will be firing off all of those Vol spells the whole time just destroying and deleting every single wave that comes out of those ultimatums. It's actually very, very nice. That being said, though, there's no, almost no defensives in this build. We, we are blinding. Um, I do believe that I have somewhere disorienting display, which gives us a 10% chance to blind enemies whenever we use our elemental skills. This actually winds up feeling a lot more like a 50% than it does a 10 um, I don't know if that's because 
every single arc chain counts as a, is being calculated and, and figured into that. I don't know why, but it feels like it's it's up a lot. We also have corrosive elements. This is allowing us to uh, convert our lightning damage to cold damage, and then again over to fire damage. So as you can see, both Arc and Ball Stormcall are actually not dealing that much lightning damage. They're dealing much more in cold and fire. So we're converting everything, and so applying the three different kinds of exposure are... It's really helping amplify our damage, especially in pack clear situations. It's also pretty nice for bossing. Uh, it is pretty difficult to get a lot of penetration in this character. Mostly because I don't understand how penetration works in conversion builds. I don't know if I could slot in a lightning damage uh, penetration and that initial hit would penetrate and then convert to other elements. I don't know how the function of that actually works. So moving on, we already talked about Doriani's Lesson. Now, the reason that Doriani's Lesson is superior to other options is because it's the elemental damage leashed his life as opposed to a specific school cold lightning or fire leached back his life this allows all of our damage to be leached back and it, as you saw it actually helps sustain us pretty well um being that we only have 3000 hp at the moment i'm working on it we can get this character up to like 4.5 maybe even 5000 in really really good gear um so it'll be much better at that point um anyway uh, as long as something doesn't outright one-shot us, we're usually able to almost instantaneously bring ourselves back up to full life. So, um, and then we have other things like Storm Rider. This gives us a little bit of extra uh, cold and lightning damage. Also generates power charges. The Blast Freeze. This is a freeze proliferation, which is really, really funny in conjunction with, I believe, somewhere over here, I have uh, Cold Conduction, which makes our lightning damage chill and our... Um, cold damage, well, you can read it, it says chilled enemies are also shocked and shocked enemies are also chilled, right? So this is nice, it slows things down. We also have Hinder somewhere in the form of a Abyss Jewel, pardon me, it's kind of yucky. And then because it's very, very difficult to get uh, elemental resistances on this kind of character, we're just utilizing Prismatic Heart on, um, we have a Lightning Resistance Cluster Jewel, we have a Cold Resistance Cluster Jewel. I believe I actually have two cold resistance cluster jewels, and then this one is just giving us prismatic dance. Uh, wow, I have three. <laughs> um, so, and uh, and as you can see, our maximum uh, elemental resistance is actually seventy six. I kind of plan on improving this further at some point. I think um, I've used the uh, the legacy lore weaves and had it as high as eighty before, and it, it does feel really nice actually. So that might be for later development. So that being said, this is for the most part the build, right? And it's just a Pathfinder. It, for the most part this ascendancy feels almost entirely wasted. It's just the nature of getting a lot of flask effect duration through these passing nodes and the flask charges gained that feels really really nice for just allowing us to spam button presses as much as humanly possible. I failed to mention earlier um, Probably the MVP of the entire build is actually Kiara's Determination, Silver Flask, as silly as that might sound. With only a three second duration, it gives us immunity to stuns, dude. It makes us immune to stuns, dude. It may, did you hear that? Um, so that's fucking amazing. Um, and as a Pathfinder, it pretty much the only other thing it does for us is it makes us immune to curses as well. We're immune to all elemental ailments during Flask Effect as a Pathfinder, so the other things don't actually matter at all. Um, but the, it's the stun. It's insane. It's very, very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, it's probably the only reason I could play Ultimatum at all with this character, in fact. So, that being said, Bloodstained Weapons, two Call of the Brotherhood rings, this almost entirely converts all of our lightning damage down to cold, which is a lot of fun. Uh, this is bad. Uh, Solstice Vigil is actually bad. Um, I'm using it for the re Replica Headhunter. Just a rare amulet with, honestly, something along the lines of, like, uh, Zealotry has reduced um, mana reservation requirements would be really nice. You can add a whole additional aura into the build. As you can see, I'm only using, um, I'm using Zealotry. You could also do Wrath. 
Um, so I'm using Zealotry for the crits and Herald of Thunder and Herald of Ice. Um, I think it gives me better elemental ailments and therefore it, I feel as though it increases my ability to clear maps. It's probably not as good for single target damage though. And then um, the only reason that I'm actually continuing to keep this other than the anointment that I actually paid out of pocket for is the, uh, the Temporal Chains Aura, which feels pretty nice. I do actually have intentions of um, trying to roll spell crit onto this body armor and hopefully get some life as well. And I, I will eventually white socket this, uh, removing those green sockets and, and turn this into my main chest. Um, if I could also awaken this with spell crit and explode, which would be absolutely insane, um, I will probably swap off of the Impulse's Broken Heart. I guess the final thing I want to leave you guys with for, I guess, just my sort of playthrough of this so far is that I feel as though Solstice Vigil, Impulse's Broken Heart, and Replica Headhunter are actually dog shit. Um, they're actually making this build worse, uh, straight up. Uh, if you replace this with a Stygian Vice, uh, maybe an Agate Amulet with, like I said, a reduced mana reservation, uh, and then this with a Spell Crate Explode Chest, or honestly just a really defensive chest uh, with a huge amount of maximum life, uh, percent increased life, huge amount of evasion, or even ES if you wanted to go that route. There's also alternatives to do a Petrified Blood low life build with this character, and you get even more damage out of it. Although I haven't played it out, so I don't know how that would work. Um, and then what you've seen me do with this character thus far is just on like leveling items that literally dropped in like, I don't know, that, well, I guess they're high item level, but these are, these are ID scrolls. I didn't craft these at all. Um, I guess this was a, somehow something that fell out of a, a Yun. This was just on the ground at the end of a ultimatum. Likewise, bought these. These are kind of nice for the increased uh, aura effect, but that's not required at all. Uh, what is required is the elemental damage catalyst. That's a big deal. Uh, it gives you the additional 8% to convert the lightning damage to cold. Uh, that is a very big deal, actually. It, if both rings are catalyzed, uh, you get a 98% conversion, or what is it, 96% conversion if neither ring is uh, catalyzed, you only get an 80% conversion. So I guess ultimately it doesn't matter. It is a little bit more damage at the end of the day though. And then uh, the stat, yeah, do that. All in all, I, I actually probably did spend uh, probably about seven, eight, nine exalted orbs on this character, maybe even 10. Uh, it has been pretty frustrating. Uh, you do die a lot. And like I said, it, it does require a little bit of patience and a lot of um, calculation and decision making and, and discipline in terms of how you deal your damage rotation. Um, but that being said, it's pretty fun and it's actually quite rewarding uh, in terms of like the sensation that you get, I suppose, uh, while you're actually just really laying waste, absolutely devastating the ultimatum encounters. Uh, I will say for farming the, um, the inscribed ultimatums, it's actually pretty pog. Uh, let me see if I have one. I'll finish off the video with one of those. I think I probably have like a cheap, crappy one, hopefully. Blistering Cold, Ailment and Curse Reflection. I don't know about that on this character, actually. I don't know about that on this character, actually. This one... Ah, uh, this one's crazy. I don't have that card. Um, so yeah, I probably can't. I don't have that either. Let's just do this. Why not? I'll probably kill myself. <laughs> I'll probably shock and kill myself. It's not a big deal, though. I actually, I'm immune, aren't I? Maybe not. Maybe I'll be okay. So we're gonna do it. Yeah. So let's just show it off one last time for that outro. Let me tell your future. But yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with Fate it. Awaits like I said, you. it's just a, it's about Consider it button pressing. This trial may be the one that brings about your defeat. And it's also about surviving the first handful of seconds in these encounters. Uh, the first 15 seconds are very scary. Once you get your charges, like I have now, it becomes pretty easy though. I put you out of your misery. Going, no, I'm just surviving. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm messing up.
so you can kind of see it. Like, the, the Vault Arc casts are, like, basically freezing the entire screen. And then the Vault Storm Call button presses are just absolutely destroying all of the frozen targets. Um, so that being said, that leaves me with a, one little bit of advice. I think it would be perfectly reasonable to, um, if you wanted to take one of these rings off, which other people who are playing this build, there are a handful of them actually, other people are only using one Call of the Brotherhood and then an influence ring with some kind of curse application on the ring. You could do conductivity, you could do assassin's mark I've seen. Um, I would also recommend the uh, additive flat cold damage to chilled or frozen enemies would be a really nice modifier. I think you can get those for lightning and um, uh, fire damage as well. So that would be a, a nice source of flat damage. I will say, uh, in terms of the scaling, you want as much percentage increase as you can. You get a lot of flat through your jewels. Uh, and then the, the gem levels is a really big deal for the flat damage. So any kind of percentage increases that you can get, because we're not really taking very much um, damage modification on the actual uh, tree here. And in fact, this whole crit thing could probably be removed for more life and more defensives and you probably wouldn't even notice that it was gone. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this character's POB in the description. Um, I'm really happy with this character. I'm having a lot of fun. I will say by my own build standards, it's objectively bad because it, it very much struggles with real endgame encounters. I would never take this character to a Maven encounter. I would never take this into an Awakener level 8 Cirrus or 9 Cirrus. I would never take this to Uber at Ziri. I'd barely even take this to Delve. But for Ultimatum specifically, and for general Atlas and map progression, it's very, very, very fun. It's not your dedicated boss killer though, unfortunately. Maybe it will be with a couple more items and a couple more upgrades, but at the moment, ill-advised. Uh, this is just for fun and to keep things feeling fresh, uh, to keep yourself engaged, you know? It's a new kind of obstacle to overcome. Uh, the, the build and the damage is absolutely f fucking insane, but it's very much driven by your ability to play it properly. And that's where the fun is for me. So if that sounds like something that's fun for you, go for it. It's pretty cool. It certainly looks good. Anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying your league. Um, I know there's been a lot of feedback that suggests that maybe you're not. And, um, and that's okay. I take breaks all the time. I think it's really important to do that. Uh, so, you know, maybe you need to freshen up. Maybe something like a Vol Storm called Pathfinder will do that for you. Oh, I should mention, um, you can utilize the principles that I used for Vol Lightning Gems with any other color gems. You can do this with Vol uh, Flame Blast, which would actually probably be better if you got a really good plus Fire Gems modifier on there. Uh, I know Once Upon a Time Cute Dog did a really fun looking Vol Blight character. Uh, I think that was all the way back in Delirium. Or not Delirium, I'm sorry, Betrayal. A long, long time ago. And um, yeah, so I know uh, Flame Blast Ignite Proliferation is really good right now, so that would probably be a good alternative as well. You can utilize the exact same principles for manufacturing a staff like this. You would just want to change the metallic fossil over to a scorched fossil or over to a frigid fossil if you wanted to do something like Vault Ice Nova for lesion openings. Or um, I, I guess the cold gems would probably not really be the best one. Um, probably Fire, Lightning, and Chaos would be your best options. Cold is a little harder to do just because the spells aren't really all that amazing. Um, for hand casting and I, I just like the lightning ones it makes me feel like a badass so that's why I chose that one so anyway um, yeah if you get the opportunity to try and do something nice for somebody it's uh, it's been a weird couple of years and uh, kind of looks like it's just gonna keep getting weirder so take care of yourselves I'll see you again next time